Hi, this is Dan from Tiny Home Builders. In this video, I want to demonstrate how to use SketchUp to navigate and take measurements of an existing SketchUp model. Now, SketchUp is an extremely powerful program that allows you to create complex 3D models fairly easily. At Tiny Home Builders, we use SketchUp to model each one of our designs, and that allows us to see what the houses are going to look like before any construction begins. We also use the model to create our actual plans. That model is also included in the plan packages that we sell, which has the benefit of allowing someone to go in and change anything that they want and then essentially recreate the plans. So if you didn't like where a window was at and you wanted to move it, you could go in there and make that change and then recreate the plans. The other benefit is that even if you don't intend to change anything about the plans, you can still go into the model and look around and see how all the pieces fit together and get any measurement for any component within the house. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is download the free version of SketchUp. And to do that, go to www.sketchup.com. And when you get there, you'll see on the right-hand side, there's a large blue button called Download SketchUp. And when you click on that, there's another blue button here, but this is for the pro version of SketchUp. You're going to want to go down here to Download SketchUp, the basic version, and that's the free version. When you click on that, you just select your operating system, optionally fill in your, your email address, and then click Agree and Download. Once you've downloaded and installed SketchUp, go into the folder that contains all the files in the plan package and look for the model file. If you see here, the type is SketchUp Model and the extension is SKP. Go ahead and double click that and it should open up in SketchUp. One of the first things you'll see when you open up SketchUp is this toolbar across the top. Now this doesn't quite have all the tools that I want to demonstrate today, so we're going to turn this toolbar off and turn on an expanded version. So first click on View, go into Toolbars, and uncheck the Getting Started toolbar. And then go back into View, click Toolbars, and then click Large Toolset. Now this got rid of the tool, toolbar across the top and gave us a slightly expanded version off to the left hand side that has a, a few more options. The first thing you're going to have to know is how to navigate around this model. And for that, fortunately, there's only three tools that we're going to be using and they're all located right here. This is called the Orbit tool, this is the Pan tool, and the Zoom tool. So let's click on the Pan tool first. Click on that, which is the hand, and when we click and drag, what we're doing is we're moving the model in horizontal and vertical directions. So we're not moving around the model, we're just shifting the model to the left or to the right or up and down. And This is real nice when you, when you zoom in pretty closely. The next tool that we're going to use is called the Orbit tool. And this actually spins the model around, which allows you to look at it from different perspectives. Now this is, as you spin the model, you're spinning around a point, and that point is chosen by where you're selecting. So right now, the model is far enough away to where as we, as we spin it, regardless of where we're actually, where that point is, it's far enough away where we really don't notice any difference between it being here and perhaps on the inside of the house. But when you get a little bit closer to things, sometimes, you know, if, you're, if you've got a piece of wood that's close to you versus a piece of wood that's far away and you want to spin around that close one, make sure that when you press down on the button, when you, when you click down on your mouse, make sure you're clicking on the piece of wood that you want to orbit around. So as a demonstration, let me show you. If I click back here, let's say I want to rotate around this, this, sill, this uh, sill plate here. If I click on that and I rotate, you can see I'm rotating, I'm, I'm looking at that from either side. But if I were to click back here, all the way back here, as I rotate, you can see I'm rotating a lot farther because that point that I'm rotating around is a lot farther away. So it's a big difference between where you're clicking. So make sure you click on the piece that you, that you want to rotate around. So typically, I'm looking at this piece. I would get in position, but now I'm in the position that I want. I've orbited to the position that I want, but now the one portion of it is cut off. So to correct that, I'll just use the pan tool and then position that back over. Now to get into this view, you'll notice that I've, I've zoomed in and I didn't click on any tool buttons. And that's because I, I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. If you don't have a scroll wheel, then um, there's this, this zoom tool, which you just click on that. And then when you click down, if you pull down, it zooms you out and then if you push up it zooms you in but I very rarely ever use that I just use I just use my scroll wheel 
so that's the uh, you know there's only three tools that are for navigation and it's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward now right now we're looking at the full model but you may not always want to look at the full model you may want to look at just the framing like for instance right now it's a little difficult to take any measurements on the framing because we've got the sheathing turned on well to to turn off this layer assuming that the model's been been built correctly and put in various layers you can go up to window and click on this layers button and this will bring up a new window it brings up this window here and this shows you all the various layers that you have that that are built into this model and you can selectively by clicking on these boxes you can selectively turn some on and off so if we go to the sheathing layers these are all organized by name with sheathing if we go ahead and click on all these sheathing layers to turn them off move that back out of the way now you can see that we've got our model here with with all the sheathing turned off now I also turned off uh, some of the framing measurement framing uh, layers let me turn those back on okay so here we're looking at the we're looking at our house without the sheathing on so now you can get in there and and really take a measurement of of the piece that you want now there's different you know you can go in and selectively turn on different layers uh, as you choose but there's also something called scenes and if you look across the top you'll see these different tabs across here and these are different scenes that that I've created and each one of these generally corresponds to a page in the front in the uh, in the plans so if you were to click on this front left if you were looking your in your plans one of the very first pages is going to be called front left so when you click on that this is what you're going to see in the plans so if you're looking at a you know a specific page on your plans you can generally go in here and find the page that you're looking for so you say well I'm looking at the the back framing so I'm gonna click on that and it pulls up the view that you're seeing on the back framing so let's say you pulled this up and you said well this this window is one foot six and an eighth but there's no measurement for this window now these are the same size windows but if you had any doubts about that you could go in I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this model just a little bit and I'm going to use my scroll wheel to zoom in and you could take a measurement here and see what what that measurement is so it's a nice little way to uh, you know correspond or correlate the pages of the plans with with the model with the views in the model now to take measurements that kind of leads us into the the next step which is taking measurements now if I zoom in let's let's go ahead and take this measurement to see if it's one foot six and an eighth I'm going to zoom in and for measurements there's only two tools that I'm going to be interested in and the first one is this tape measure and the second one is this protractor this image of a protractor so let's go ahead and take a look at the the tape measure first so let me zoom in now whenever I'm whenever I'm uh, looking trying to take a measurement I always like to have an angled view because sometimes if you're not looking at an angled view let me just go back to this view if I were to just zoom in on this board like this I could take a measurement and more than likely it would would sketch up would give me the correct measurement but it might actually grab a weird corner because this this you know these two points the front of this board and the back of this board are perfectly aligned in this view and so it might actually grab the wrong the wrong point so I can't always trust the measurements that it, it gives me but if I were to just rotate a little bit then I know for a fact which which point I'm grabbing there's no there's no confusion SketchUp won't get, get confused and I won't get confused so we're gonna take the tape measure now as I run the tape measure along along this line here you can see that there's a little there's a little square there and that means it's just along an edge when I go down it, the square turns into a circle and so it's reached an endpoint so it's reached the end point of this this board so I'm gonna click click once and I'm holding down so I'm dragging the tape measure as I, I as I've clicked and hold, held and I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna wait until it turns into a circle again and now I can see that it's grabbed the other end point of this board and you can see there's a little little tool tip that pops up there and there's also a measurement in the bottom right hand corner uh, of the screen that shows me that it's one foot six and an eighth of an inch long so this window is indeed the same width as the other window so this is really really a convenient way to to take measurements I can see how long we know how how deep a, a two by four is but it's three and a half inches here so it's just a nice way to kind of go around and and take a couple extra measurements if um, if you wanted to know for for some reason the end of the board to this end of the the two by four it's two foot and thirteen sixteenths so that's 
That's what you're going to do primarily, I would say, when you're navigating around this menu or ma navigating around this model, is really just taking these, these uh, linear measurements. Another type of measurement that you might want to take is an angular measurement, so calculate an angle of a board. Now for this, I've gone to our framing callout scene, framing callout 2, and so this is showing a detailed view of, of one of our rafters. So once again, I'm just going to rotate the model a little bit. I'm going to zoom in, and I want to see what this, this angle is. This angle is actually provided in the plans, but it's not the, the diagram or the, uh, the label isn't in the, in, isn't in the model. So I'm going to zoom in on this. Let me just move it over using our pan tool, and I'm recentering it. All right, so to take the angular measurement, I'm going to be using this protractor tool. So the protractor tool, I just click on that, and you'll see this protractor image shows up, and it kind of rotates based on whatever plane I'm on. You can see it's rotating. So now it's it's even with this top plane, and now it's even with this 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 plane. And then if I scroll it down here, let me see if I can't quite. Uh, now it's just even with the horizontal plane. The angle that I'm interested in is this angle right here. So it is along the green plane that I'm interested in. So this point, depending on where you're coming from it, you know, as you come into it, it can be on any plane because it's just a point. So what you'll want to do is you're going to want to start on the plane to where you plan on taking your measurement and then move into that, move into that dot or that point. And then as you move into it, just make sure that, that the color of the protractor is the same color as the plane that that you're you're working with or that you want to take a measurement with. So I go ahead and click on the point. Oop, make sure it's green. Let me start over here. All right, it's green. I'm going to go ahead and click on that point and just click one time. And now as I drag out, you can see there's a line that's coming from the the protractor. I'm going to go ahead and click on this edge. I just want to click on one of the one of the lengths of one of the uh, lengths between the, the angle that I want. So I'm trying to calculate this angle. So this is this is one of the legs of that angle. So uh, I'll go ahead and click on that. And then now you see as I pull it out, I'm getting another line here. But this line actually extends beyond the protractor as well. So I'm just going to go down here and my, my pointer turned into a circle because I'm at an end point. And when you look down at the bottom, uh, you, if you look down where we saw the measurement before, we can now see that the angle says 25.9 degrees. So if I go ahead and click on that, it's 29.5 degrees. Now this is not actually, you know, if you were to put this on a chop saw or a, a miter saw, as I mentioned in my in my video series, this is not the measurement that you'd want to select on your saw. You'd have to uh, take 90 degrees minus this to to come up with the measurement that you're gonna you're gonna make for your saw. So um, so that's about it. That's uh, showing you linear linear measurements and then also angular measurements. So let's just go back out to this one if we wanted to calculate how long this is. We've already got that measurement, but just click here and click there. And we can see it's 3 foot, 11 and 5 sixteenths approximately. Okay, thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye.